Uh, welcome guys again to your own channel. In this video, we will discuss about the elasticity of a scale, which is one of the most useful concept when we are finding the returns to a scale for a production function. In the previous videos, we learned about return to scales and three types of return to scales, which is constant return to scales, increasing returns to scale, and decreasing returns to scale. But the elasticity of a scale will help us to know what types of production function we will have. Either we have an increasing return to scale production function, decreasing return to scale production function, or constant return to scale production function. Why? Because the elasticity of a scale measures, it measures the percent increase in output due to just only 1% increase, 1% increase in all inputs. It means when we are when we increase the scale of our operation just by 1%, when we increase the scale of operation just by 1%, what will happen to the output level? And mostly when it comes to practice, companies and also firms. They are interested with very small level of changes. They think when we are uh, when we are going to increase our scale of operation just by one percent, by two percent, by a very small change, what will happen to the output level? They're not talking about doubling their inputs or tripling their inputs. Rather, they are talking about just very small changes. Especially when it comes to big companies, they are not going to change their scale of operation by two times or th by three times or like uh, very, very big level of change. Rather, they are interested in very small changes. So the elasticity of a scale help them to know whether they are going to have like a constant return to scale increasing or decreasing return to scale. We have a formula for the elasticity of a scale. Suppose we have our initial production function, y is a function of x, some function of x, and x can be our inputs. This x can be labor and capital, except a vector of inputs. So if we are going to scale, by some amount of t, like yt is our output after scaling is equal to f of tx. It means when we are going to scale our level of operation by t, that means we are going to increase all inputs by t. So we have a formula for the elasticity of a scale. If we use ex, as a notation, it means elasticity of inputs. So it, it's equal to dyt dy of t divided by yt over dt divided by t. It means elasticity of a scale is equal to the percentage change in input due to a 1% change in all inputs. t is the scale of inputs. And we are going to evaluate this one at t equal to 1. Because when t is equal to 1, we are in the current scale of operation. We are going to scale up or scale down. If t is greater than 1, we are scaling up. If t is less than 1, we are scaling down. But we are going to evaluate that current scale in order to know the list of scales. Then we can change it by doing some very bas basic mathematics it will change to derivative of yt with respect to t multiplied by t over yt. Again, we are going to evaluate as t equal to 1. We know that y of t is equal to ftx. Then we can write down instead of yt, ftx. Derivative of ftx with respect to t multiplied by t over f of tx. It means output after scaling. Again, we are going to evaluate that t equal to 1. Then, when we use this elasticity of scale, when the result of this ex 
by using either this formula or this formula, if it's equal to one, if it's equal to one, we are going to have a constant return to scale production function. Constant return to scale production function. But if EX of the results of this elasticity of scale is greater than one, then we will have increasing returns to scale production function. And finally, if the results of EX is less than one, then we will have decreasing return to scale production function. Overall, elasticity of a scale measure when we increase the scale of operation by a very small amount, like 1%, what will happen to the output level? What will happen to the output level? If the results of elasticity of a scale is equal to 1, we have constant return to scale production function. If it's greater than 1, we have increasing return to scale production function. If it's less than 1, we have decreasing return to scale production function. In the next video, by using some example related to cobb Douglas production function, linear production function, and different sorts of production function, I will show you practically how we use this formula to know what types of production function we'll have, especially in the case of cobb Douglas production function, because uh, as we talked before, in the case of cobb Douglas production function, the return to scale depends on the value of alpha plus beta. By using this formula, we will exactly know when cobb Douglas production function shows constant return to scale, increasing return to scale, and decreasing return to scale. For this video, this is it. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Don't forget to subscribe my YouTube channel. See you.